Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. One of the most common questions I get from my viewers is, how do I connect up a DIY expansion battery to a power station? Now one of the best options for a DIY expansion battery is using a 48 volt battery. Now they come in all different sizes and shapes. Right here is Lifetime Smart Golf Cart Battery. It's a 100 amp hour model, so it's fairly large at over five kilowatt hours, but there's also smaller options available. Now in this video, I'll show you how simple it is to connect this battery up to basically any power station so you can charge it super quick and extend the runtime. Now previously on the channel, I tested charging power stations with 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt batteries. And the most efficient and fastest way to charge the power station is by using a 48 volt battery. That's because it doesn't require any conversion. It just connects directly into the power station. It maxes out the solar charge controller so it can charge at the peak input. For example, right here, I have the Anker C1000. This allows up to 600 watts of solar via the charging port. I've taken the 48 volt battery, plugged it into the charging port, and we are charging it over 580 watts. Now, if you have the new EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, this allows up to 1000 watts of solar input and connected up to this battery, I am charging at 1000 watts. Now, this also works for larger power stations. Right here, I have the Pecron E3600. I have it connected up to one of the solar charging ports and it's charging a little over 1000 watts input. Now this power station does have dual solar charging ports and it allows parallel functionality, meaning the charging can come from a single source. Just to demonstrate that it's possible, I've connected up both of the charge controllers to the 48 volt battery and we are charging it over 2000 watts. Now this is not recommended, at least with the wire that I'm using. I had to upgrade the fuses to 40 amp fuses so they didn't blow and it's only 10 gauge wire rated for 30 amps. So it's gonna get toasty. I just wanted to show you how much power you can pull from these 48 volt batteries to charge up a large system. So as long as you make sure your wire is rated for the power and you have the proper fuses, you're good to go. But uh, the current wiring that I have is not designed for this much power. So let me show you how you connect up to the battery so you can charge your power station. It's super simple. So you have a main positive terminal and you have a main negative terminal. This is where the power goes in and out of the battery. So you purchase this adapter here. I'll have that down in the video description. Basically, this is a 10 gauge wire rated for 30 amps or about 1500 watts. So as long as you're not going to be pulling over 1500 watts from this battery, this adapter will work really well. If you need to pull more than that, say your power station has two separate charging ports, you can pick up two of these adapters, one for each charging port. Now the reason I went with this adapter is that it has built-in fuses. It's plug and play, so you just connect it up to the battery and you're good to go. One side has ring terminals and the other side has this 45 amp Anderson power pole connection. So this is well rated for the power going through these wires. Now there are tons of different adapters online that can connect up to this Anderson power pole. For example, on the top here is Anderson Power Pole to 7909, which works with Blue Eddy, Goal Zero, and the older Jackery power stations. And you can pick up this 7909 to 8020 adapter to work with the newer Jackery power stations. If you have a power station that uses XT60, you can connect this up to here and give you XT60. Or if you have a power station that's compatible with the most common connection, which is MC4, I'll list a MC4 adapter that you can purchase so you can plug this to basically any solar charging cable that has MC4 that will be compatible with your power station. Now I just wanted to demonstrate that this is compatible with the Blue Eddy AC180 as well. I have the Anderson Power Pole to 7909 adapter connected to this adapter here. It's plugged into the solar charging port and the AC180 is charging at 500 watts, which is the maximum solar input for this power station. So just remember, all of these adapters are down in the video description, and I might include a couple extras for people that put comments in the video, just in case I missed an adapter that might be compatible with your power station. Now, so far I've demonstrated that a 48 volt LFP battery like this is compatible with medium and large power stations, as long as their solar charging ports accept 60 volts or higher. When a LFP battery like this is fully charged, it puts out around 58 volts. So you have to keep in mind that it's not going to be compatible with smaller power stations. Most smaller power stations accept lower input voltages. For example, the Energizer 320 is around 25 volts. The older Blue Eddy or the smaller Blue Eddy power stations are around 28 volts. Even the Anker C300 is 28 volts and the EcoFlow River 2 Pro only goes up to 50 volts. 
So if we connected this 48 volt battery up to these, it would damage these power stations. So make sure you check your user manual. Now I do have a basic consulting service. If you have any questions about compatibility of your power station with a 48 volt battery or what adapter you may need, reach out and I'll get back to you super quick. Now, if anybody's on the fence about using a standalone battery as a DIY expansion battery, I wanna talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages so you guys can make a better decision. Now, first off, the biggest advantage of using a standalone battery is the cost. For example, this has 5,100 watt hours of radiant capacity and you can actually get that full capacity from this battery. And it costs a little under $1,000, so the price is really good at under 20 cents per watt hour. Now, if you compare that to a battery that you can get from like the Anker C1000, it's rated at uh, 1,056 watt hours at around $550, so it's over 50 cents per watt hour. So you get a really good deal on this and much more capacity. And also remember that you can buy smaller 48 volt batteries if you don't wanna spend the full thousand. You can get smaller batteries on Lightime's website that are still 48 volt batteries. Now the next advantage is the fact that this is not proprietary. It's just a standalone battery. You can connect up whatever type of accessory to this. You could charge it and discharge it at crazy amounts. For example, this is rated for 100 amps input and output. That's over 5,000 watts. That means you could connect up a 5,000 watt load to this and it'd be fine. You could also charge this with up to 5,000 watts of solar panels. So the advantage is that you're not stuck to the limits of your power station if you want to use this as kind of a mediator between your power station and your solar panels, especially if you want to charge with higher voltage solar. Some of the power stations you're stuck with the 60 volt limit. You could charge this with a high voltage array, plug that into the power station and it just kind of acts as a mediator. This takes the high voltage and then it puts the power into your power station. So those are some of the advantages of using this type of battery with a power station as a DIY expansion battery. Now, speaking of the disadvantages of using a standalone battery, the first one is that there's no communication between the battery and the power station because it just connects to the solar charging port this just acts like a giant solar panel or a giant um, battery that charges up the other power station. So there's no communication there. It doesn't average out the state of charge and you don't really see that on the power station because it doesn't know what power is left in this. So with a dedicated expansion battery with your power station, they would kind of average out the state of charge and you know how much capacity you have left. Now, luckily, because this is a smart battery, you can connect with the Lightime app and see the state of charge and see what's happening inside the battery. So that's nice, but not all 48 volt batteries do that. The next main disadvantage is the fact that once your battery dies and once your power station dies, you actually have to charge them both up independently. They do not sync together. For example, if you have a power station with its own expansion battery, they're going to sync. And they're gonna charge and discharge uh, together. But with this, you have to manually charge up the battery and manually charge up the power station. So it is a little less convenient. Now that is just a small list of advantages and disadvantages for using a standalone battery. I know there are plenty of others. So if you have one you'd like to share, make sure you leave it in a comment on the video. Now when Lightime reached out about a video collaboration, I told them I wanted to test one of their 48 volt batteries for the purpose of this video, using it as a DIY expansion battery. And I saw this battery and I really liked the form factor and the feature set. I like that this is a plastic battery, so it's a little bit less weight than a traditional server rack battery. And I really like the form factor. The fact that this can sit inside a cabinet or on top of a shelf much more easily than a actual server rack battery. I like that it also has Bluetooth connectivity so you can connect with the smart app and see what's going on inside the battery. Now, of course, before I make any recommendations that you guys purchase this battery, I want to test it out and see how it actually performs. So I've done a capacity test on this. I've done a max load test and also I've tested low temperature charging protection. So let's go ahead and check out those results. So for the first test, I connected the battery to my EG4 6000 XP inverter with an inline shunt. And I was actually discharging the battery at a 0.2C rate, which is right around 1,024 watts. Now the test came to an end when the battery was fully discharged and shut off the inverter. Now taking a closer look at the shunt, you can see we pulled 101 amp hours or 5.2 kilowatt hours. And this ran for a total of five hours. So we pulled over capacity out of this battery. In the next test, I wanted to see if the battery could handle the maximum output of 100 amps continuous without shutting down. I connected up a massive resistive load to my 6000 XP inverter. It was over 5000 watts or over 100 amps continuous for 10 minutes. It ran this load and it did not shut down. So yes, it can handle maximum output without turning off. 
And for the final test, I always like to make sure low temperature charging protection works. Now it's really easy when it's winter outside, I just left the battery outside overnight and in the morning I connected it up. The smart app was showing that the battery was 32 degrees inside, which is fairly accurate because the night was around 29 degrees. And I tried charging it up and it did not charge the battery. It kicked on the low temperature charging protection, which you can see here in the app. So yes, low temperature charging protection does work on this battery. Now after all those tests, you can see that this performs exactly as advertised. It passed the max load test, the capacity test, and it also has low temperature charging protection. So if you're looking for a battery that meets all those requirements, make sure you check out the Lifetime 48 volt smart golf cart battery. I'll include a link to it down in the video description. Now, one last thing, what's pretty cool is if you're looking for a bundle with a charger and a 500 amp shunt, they actually offer a bundle with this battery so you can have a high powered charger at a discounted price. So if you are looking for a charger and a battery, I definitely recommend checking out the bundle down in the video description. Now guys, I am super familiar with this process of using 48 volt batteries to extend the runtime on my power stations. In fact, I do it every single day. I use the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra as my daily, and I have a pretty large battery that I also charge up with separate solar panels. In fact, I have four solar arrays. I have two going to the Ultra and two going to that battery bank. I've also connected this battery in parallel with that and I'm able to take that extra power and charge up the Ultra when needed. So if I have a bunch of cloudy days where I'm not getting as much solar, I can connect those batteries into the Ultra and get much longer run times. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please smash the thumbs up button. I'll recommend a couple other videos that you can check out as well. Remember, all the adapters are down in the video description if you're looking to connect a power station up to a 48 volt battery. We'll see you guys in the next video.